G'day, I'm Rebecca from Rev Bikes. Today we're going to demonstrate the fitting of a hub motor. So a hub motor similar to the blue bike here which is in the front wheel, we're going to do a rear wheel because it gives us all the uh, major complications we come across when fitting a motorised wheel. So first being a cassette, second being a disc brake mount on this bike so we're going to show you how to do all that. So the tools we're going to need for this job include a 5mm Allen key, 4mm Allen key, Torx Allen key. Notice the star shape. A cassette removal tool, tire levers, a 10mm spanner that slots over the axle, the chain whip. Alright, so first things first. Much easier when the bike is upside down to access the wheel in and out. So this has got a quick release wheel in at the moment. Undo the quick release, wind it out. So if the, brake, if the bike didn't have disc brakes, we would need to unclip the caliper brake pads so that the wheel can come out. And joyously, this is a brand new bike at this stage so the chain is not dirty you may want to use gloves if the ch if you're going to get yourself dirty so we have a couple of things that we're going to remove off this wheel and put onto our mo motorized wheel the first is the cassette the second is the disc and the third is the tire and tube so I like to do the disc first uh, because we don't want to risk bending it by um, banging it on the bench or anything like that. Usually they're a Torx head Allen key so if you don't have one of those it can be a bit tricky to undo these bolts. Some bikes have these actually pressed on um, so with rivets so you actually can't remove the disc you'll need to get yourself a new disc to put on a motorized wheel. In most cases they'll just be bolted on undo the screws. One disc. Next step is we probably just want to remove this uh, spindle here so that we can get the cassette off. First, we put the lock, lock ring in here. If we try to unwind that cassette off, the cassette just moves around. So we need to hold it in place with the chain whip. The way to do this, I like to imagine that it's an R on the chain whip side, because my name is Rev Becker and then it makes it simple for us to undo that anti-clockwise as you would expect. So the cassette does have a couple of loose parts, usually a couple of these uh, cogs are separate. You can see that the, uh, the notches inside here and on the spline mount there's one that's very wide and one that's very narrow compared to the other even spaces. So when we're putting it back on, we'll watch out for that. So next we take the tire and tube off. So taking the tire off is fairly straightforward for most people. Poke something into it, allow the valve to open and the air to come out from the tube. Right. So then we want to get the uh, tire away from the edge of the rim a little bit. We pop the hooky part underneath the edge of the tire. Do it near where, where you've got a spoke to hook this lever onto, like so. Then get a second lever and pull that bead out all the way around. The second side should be much easier. 
So you want to be aware of the uh, tube inside. You don't want to pinch that in any way or you'll have to replace it. We often replace the tubes when we do motorised hubs. We often replace the tube with a thorn proof tube so it's thicker and stronger, more resistant to punctures. There we go, we've got the tyre off now. Next job, get the motorised wheel. Alright, so here we have the motorised wheel. You can see that it's got the cassette mount on. Uh, it's got a hole here for the tyre tube to go in. Essentially it's the same process in reverse to put the tyre back on. Alright, there we go. And we pump the tyre up. It's a good idea to pump the tyre up before you start working on the rest of it. Um, just in case you do give yourself a pinch flat while the tyre's flat. First thing, we need to get the uh, nuts and bolts off, the nuts and washers off the axle so that we can utilise our tools effectively and not get anything jammed. You can pay attention to how these come off but you may be putting them back in in a different order anyway so keep your parts handy. So then we have the cassette so we look for the part that has that wider intersection and we match that up with the spline on the motor. Okay so once that's in place Once that's in place we need to put the lock ring back on. So here we are with our lock ring tool. So the lock ring goes on first. You might want to start doing it up just by hand to make sure you've got the thread right. Don't be afraid of those little clicky sounds, that just means the lock ring is actually grabbing onto those little teeth on the smallest cog there. Okay, so just before I turn the motor over to do the disc brake, one important thing to note is that you need to be especially careful of the cable coming out the end of the axle. So the last thing you want is to rest this on the bench, cause your cable some damage here. You can see it's got uh, a sort of springy metal um, guard there because some the parts where the motor comes out they are a little bit sharp they can be on some motors so just always be sure to use some sort of the the packaging from the box is a fantastic thing to use so that we can actually rest that just in there like that so that cable's well and truly safe. Okay, so now we're going to actually put the wheel into the back end of the bike so we can see how the disc lines up with the caliper. So there's a spacer in here at the moment. Are we going to need that spacer? Are we going to need an extra one to move the disc out? Are we going to get rid of the spacer? So we'll put the, put the wheel in temporarily. So usually the best way to do this is to sort of get it in the right position. Grab a 10mm spanner to just turn it around until the axle's at the right angle that it slots into those dropouts. Alright, so what we can see here is that when we line up there, we can grab the disc. When we line up where the disc will be mounted, it wants to sit in between the caliper in here. My guess would be we're actually going to be best off to remove this spacer here and attach the disc directly to the side of the motor. Alright, so let's go ahead and do that. So first we undo all these bolts holding the little spacer on. Hopefully we can reuse these bolts to put the disc in. Uh, 
Okay, so this is the little spacer disc that in this case we're not going to need. In other cases you may need an extra one of these to get the disc in the right position for your caliper. So contact Rev Bikes if you think you may need an extra one of these. One thing to be aware of, you can look down these holes here and see the motor inside. So be aware not to use longer bolts than these ones supplied. Um, so you, you want to make sure you're not going to hit the motor with those bolts that will prevent it from turning. Alright so disc rotors do have an arrow for directionality on them essentially all the markings are always on the outside so we'll pop that on like that. I usually just put three of these bolts back in just for testing purposes you can do the rest later. Three to make sure it is actually sitting straight and balanced. All right, let's try popping this in the bike. Okay, now just before we put the uh, wheel in this time, now the disc is on, what I prefer to do so that you don't risk damaging your brake pads or bending your disc is to, at the very least, loosen off this, uh, this caliper, preferably even remove it entirely and fit it again around the disc so just avoid any damage to your parts on your bike there we do have a bit of play in this bracket when we're attaching it again so but I, my preference is to remove it entirely okay that's well and truly out of the way now we will pop the wheel back in it's just being aware of where your little tabs on your washers are now this one is pretty snug this bike we don't have a lot of room to move there we go so that's in there nicely all right we're getting a slight bit of rub are we ever so slight bit of rub there which is the disc rubbing on these caliper points my thinking would be what we need to do is to actually put one more washer in here just to make sure that that disc is not going to rub on those points because once we do this bolt up that's going to compress even more so we'll use the other washer that would normally go on the outside lovely all right so no rubbing there right now if we pop this back into position we can then that's beautiful I can see that we've got plenty of sideways to and fro it doesn't hurt just to double check and we're starting to run out of thread here so just to double check we're going to be able to do it up and that's still going to sit in the right position lovely all right before we go ahead and actually do that up we want to make sure that the wheel is central straight is going to be pretty obvious as long as it's in equally in the dropouts both sides but running really central is especially important on a rear wheel if it's off you can get the speed wobbles down a hill so no one wants that so for my eye that is spot on perfect so we're just going to reattach this brake caliper now we're happy with the uh, rough position and we can do the fine tuning side to side with these bolts all right so usually it's at the end of the the job that you actually will do the exact fine tuning of where the uh, brake calipers sit but you can do it pretty well by eye while you're doing them up here just make sure the pads aren't touching on either side of the disc so when you're looking down from this angle 
I can see the map below me on both sides. Alright, so I can hear a slight bit of rubbing. Of course, when we do the bolts up, the uh, position of everything changes slightly with the pressure. So I can see the, the disc is rubbing just slightly on the inside. We can correct that, it's no big deal. The only final thing is putting these nice little covers on over the nuts and that's essentially job done. If you were doing a conversion on the front wheel instead of the rear wheel, exact same process without the cassette, without the chain to play with or anything like that. So you may or may not have a disc brake, but essentially the front wheel conversion is a lot simpler um, without the need for the chain and the cassette. Other than that, uh, we will be soon producing a instructional guide on how to fit the mid-drive motors, so keep your eyes, eyes peeled for that. Thanks for watching, I've been Rev Becker. Nice.